Wow. Okay, YouTube. Um, this is nothing to do with uh, the trailer tent. My uh, truck went in for a MOT test. So here in the UK, we have a um, test every year where you have to take it to a service station, an approved service station. It has an ex uh, examination uh, to make sure it's roadworthy, and they give you a certificate. Without it, you can't drive legally on the roads in the UK. That's if your vehicle is uh, more than three years old. So my old truck, 20 year old truck, failed on a uh, track rod ends and they're these things. So these go on the end of the steering rods. Very simply, there's a, a steel rod in front of the axle that's connected to the kind of front of the uh, wheel hub, the wheel disc, and then there's another one on the back of it. And these are the two rods that give you steering in a motor vehicle. And uh, these track rod ends give you articulation so the wheels can move sort of left and right and up and down. And uh, there is excessive wear and uh, they were absolutely right. So I'm in the process of changing these out. Let me just show you this one. So you can see there, that's a, a gate has all kind of ripped and the track rod end has got excessive movement in it. So track rod ends are uh, pretty much a uh, 20 minute, half an hour job really. Until you factor in the uh, what I'm calling the Land Rover factor, and that's uh, that this is a 20-year-old truck, you know, and the chances are these haven't been changed uh, too often. So uh, things become corroded, seized, and uh, you can end up spending an hour just trying to undo one nut. <laughs> so uh, that's the Land Rover factor. But uh, the um, new parts uh, will be in the uh, parts department at three o'clock so I'll pop around and pick those up. I've already done, I've already changed out the front uh, um, track rod ends and now I'm just waiting for the parts for the rear one. But um, let me just show you what I've done to the front end of the truck since I've owned it and I'm just slowly but surely kind of working my way through it. So since I've had the truck I've fitted the uh, terra firma uh, two inch lift kit shocks and springs I've had uh, new brake calipers was the last job that uh, got done along with uh, new uh, brake discs and now we're doing the track rod ends. So the front end is pretty, you know, I'm pretty happy with it in truth. Um, for a 20 year old truck to fail this uh, fairly meticulous uh, examination on um, fair wear and tear excessive movement on these joints. Um, was pretty good. I mean, these these uh, Land Rovers are renowned for uh, rusting through. Really, let me just give you a shot of the track rod. Okay, so that's one I've already done. There are four of them. Like I say, a rod, a bar at the front of the axle, one on each end, and a bar behind the axle, one on each end. They're less than straightforward, but it's not really. It's not the end of the world. And I try to um, do everything with hand tools. You know, so I imagine that I'm in the middle of nowhere and um, a little bit of maintenance has got to go on. So you become familiar with the vehicle, familiar with your tools, familiar with the parts, and hopefully, you know, when you break down in the middle of nowhere, you just might be able to come up with a plan to get yourself I out of I said it failed on the track rod end. Uh, I wasn't being completely honest with you. It also failed on a anti-roll bar rubber on the back of the... Um, uh, vehicle so just behind the suspension there's a big steel bar that stops the wheels articulating um, out of alignment too much but there is a fair amount of give in it and uh, this is the track rod end rubber I'll show you what one a brand new one should look like so they come in twos this is the other one that I haven't changed yet this is the one that I've changed out and as you can see it's uh, quite badly damaged so that was things that it failed its um, MOT test on. And uh, as I said before, I'm kind of over the moon that that's all it is really. I suppose total spend has been about, uh, thick track rod ends are about seven or eight pound each. So let's say 20 pound for the front, 20 pound for the back of the axle. Uh, this rubber kit was about uh, five pounds. So, um, rolling my sleeves up and getting the uh, work done myself 
you know, I think this would have been maybe uh, three or four hours probably of, uh, of messing around for somebody. Bear in mind, you know, the parts were kind of seized up and all the rest of it. We've got value added tax in this country at 20%. So um, I wouldn't have been at all surprised with a bill of, uh, um, I think, £300 probably wouldn't be too far off the mark of what you would actually have to hand over in order to get the work done and to get your truck back. So that rubber there is a uh, anti-roll bar rubber. That's the one that I've changed. The guys that do the uh, um, inspection, they normally mark anything that needs work or is worn out with uh, yellow uh, kind of wax crayon. So you've got an idea of where to start looking for all the jobs that need doing. But um, again, that's uh, that, that particular um, anti-roll bar is under kind of uh, uh, traction so it's um, less than straightforward it's kind of sprung what you have to do to fit that really is leave the wheels on the ground but jack the vehicle up and uh, then it's pretty straightforward it was a bit of a palaver but uh, let's say another hour I suppose it took me to mess around with that bear in mind that the bolts were seized up as I've said before but um, job done just talk you through my tool kit, really basic, you know, a half decent sort of kitted out toolbox will save your life. So ring spanners, open spanners, sockets. Uh, I've got a little socket set there that's uh, worth its weight in gold. These ratchet spanners are sort of fairly uh, new innovation, but uh, they can uh, really save you loads of time. I've got a one ton bottle jack, a couple of axle stands that are under the truck. Kind of as we speak, if you're gonna do any work under there, axle stands are a must you know if a truck falls on you you're pretty much done you'd be out there on your own no one will know you're there and uh, the rest is kind of history really try and lay your tools out to do the job so if you're laying under the truck you just kind of reach out and uh, you can lay your hands on your tools. top secret tip for you which is when you start the job always put in a couple of pairs of gloves so now you know the phone rings I can answer the phone or uh, jump in the car to go to the parts department and you're not uh, filthy dirty. So when you put your gloves on, always put two pairs of gloves on. It will save you loads of time. So it's another little job I did a few days ago. Um, dual battery system. So I've taken a uh, live feed off of the primary battery. Goes through a, an 80 amp. Uh, fuse into a voltage control unit and that's the main power supply for the dual battery that I put in. This battery is going to run uh, the winch, going to put a compressor on it, uh, a few other little bits and pieces, fridge in the back but uh, this uh, second battery is going to run all that stuff. That battery is always uh, fully charged to enable you to start the vehicle and the voltage control unit is what stops the primary battery going flat when you're running all your accessories. Bear in mind your fridge has got a thermostat on it so obviously it comes on and off throughout the night sort of thing or however long you're running it. I put the K&N air filter on, took out the big um, Land Rover air box because I want to mount a 12 volt compressor here. Uh, it's going to be uh, hard wired so um, Gone for the T Max. Um, I think it's about 150 pound per square inch compressor, so I can uh, up and down my tyres, a um, few other little bits and pieces I'm going to be using that for. But this is another little job that I got round to, so now it's got a dual battery system. There's another uh, 80 amp fuse just here. I'm going to run a supply from this battery um, via sort of, I think this wiring is 140 amp. Uh, going to take a live feed off of this battery, it will go through to the rear of the vehicle into a fuse box and there's going to be two 12 volt uh, cigarette lighters in the back and one of those is going to be running the fridge. But that's um, what I've been up to. A little bit of work on the truck just trying to maintain it and uh, show you what the winch plate looks like. So I fitted a winch plate yesterday uh, winch plate um, bolts to the chassis by a four bolts that really hold your bumper on and it, then it's got um, quite heavy duty kind of stays that then attach 
yet again via some um, kind of rods to your chassis mounts but very simply you know if you're going to have a winch it's got to it's got to be bolted to the chassis you know in uh, normally two to f two or four places if it's not uh, completely kind of securely bolted in and we're talking about kind of eight ton winch bolts all that's going to happen is the first time you activate your winch all you're going to do is tear the front off your car this is what's called a discrete winch mount which just means that uh, it sits behind sort of below the bumper hopefully um, you know it won't look like the uh, all singing all dancing uh, off-road 4x4 kind of fully equipped adventure truck you know I'm trying to keep this vehicle as discreet as possible but it have everything it could possibly need so that's just a few little jobs that I've been up to over the last uh, couple of weeks or so just a bit of maintenance bit of upgrade for this um, vehicle it's going to be going in to have a little bit of welding done I've tracked down some rust on the inner wings which is a problem for these vehicles but um, going in on Wednesday to have that done but uh, very simply you know if you're going to have a truck like this it's got to work and that means that you've got to maintain it so um, as always any comments love to hear them back soon